What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So I've given you some general methodologies, I've given you some specific methodologies, I've given you some tips and tricks, but now how do you combine all of this? How do you get started into bug bounties? Well, let me give you guys a basic strategy. So for me, it's very important that you get to know the application that you're testing very thoroughly. It matters so much to me because the impact of your bug is often going to depend on the core business of your target. If your target is a bank, of course they're going to care about issues regarding loans. But if we're talking about a shoe seller, you're going to need to focus on the sales process or the items return process to get more impactful bugs. This is what I mean when I say it really depends on your target, what they are after, what kind of impact they expect from you. I put a lot of emphasis on impact because I want you to ignore the low hanging fruits unless you come upon them by accident. And even if you come upon them by accident, it might pay off to just keep them aside and to report them later on as part of a chain. Low hanging fruit don't actually exist. If they would, any scanner would have been able to pick them up by now. I would really like you guys to focus on impactful bugs and I promise that the money will follow. If you report those impactful bugs instead of those low hanging fruit ones, you're going to have a lot more fun and it's going to be a lot more interesting for you in the end. So first of all, of course, there's going to be the issue of what bug bounty platform do you pick? There are several options for a bug bounty platform that you can go with a few major bug bounty platforms, or you can try your hand at some Google dorking to find a good bug bounty platform that fits your need or just a program that fits your need as well. Going to name a couple of big ones. Of course, you have Integrity, you have HackerOne, Bugcrowd, Cynic, which you need to apply for. There's also Yes We Hack and a couple of other ones as well. Feel free to just Google for a bug bounty platform and you should come across them automatically. Um, and you can also try some Google dorks. I'll put a link in the description below to some of those Google dorks and they can help you as well to find some programs directly that are not on bug bounty platforms. When you've picked your platform, so a lot is going to depend on what you like. Do you want a, a major platform that has a lot of the major players and also a lot of the major targets, of course? then of course you're going to have to go with HackerOne or Brookcrowd or any of the major platforms. If you want some more specific targets, you can go for Yes We Hack or some of the smaller platforms. There are going to be a lot less researchers. In the end, it all comes down to what you feel comfortable with. Um, I feel comfortable with Integrity because of course I can talk to them directly. They don't have any negative karma for if you report something that's not correct. So that's why I really like them and I also try to look for my targets directly using some bug bounty dorks, which when you pick, totally up to you. Now that you've picked your platform, you're of course going to need a program as well. I have some general tips for you here also. A lot of people will have a general tendency to go for a target with a very broad scope, like star.target.com. If you ask me, that's a very bad idea. Let me explain to you why. So for me, Recon only serves to help you find a target where you can apply your main testing methodology. Of course, you can do your Recon and try to do automatic Recon of things that are vulnerabilities, but these scanners that you're going to use, because of course you're not going to manually go through each website, you're going to have to configure some tools to do your recon properly for you. Um, that's going to require some real in-depth knowledge of what those tools do, in my opinion, because if everybody would run the same tools, we would have some problems because everybody would find the same vulnerabilities. That's why it really pays off to first get to know your own main methodology to so after you've done your recon you're still going to need to do hack that's what a lot of people forget in my opinion you might be able to do your recon you might be able to do your subdomain flyover and you have a full list of thousands of domains possibly but how do you pick your target from that list 
if you don't even know what you like, it's going to be nigh on impossible unless you go through each and every single one of them. So that's why I would really recommend that you fine tune your attack strategy on a main app first. Then there's also of course the issue of do you want to be uh, associated with a vulnerability disclosure program, that means points or track, no pay, or would you rather be paid for your work? Now, of course, everybody would rather be paid for their work. I'm no idiot either, I know this, um, but it, hear me out here, it really does pay off to actually go for the vulnerability disclosure programs first. There are a couple of things why. So first of all, vulnerability disclosure programs will be less crowded. There's no pay, so less hackers will be attracted to those programs. They might be a little bit less hardened due to their nature. Since they do not require payouts, they can spend a little bit less on bug bounties and they can risk a little bit more than if you have very high payouts. Because if you're a company and you have a bug bounty program that has very high payouts, of course you're going to make sure that your target is very hard and before it goes to production. At least that's what I would do. Um, and then of course there's also the thing that points will get you invites. So if you report some vulnerabilities on these programs, you'll get points for those and then you'll get private invites. So these private invites will again contain less hackers and they might be paid. So it really pays off to fine tune your strategy there and go for a vulnerability disclosure program and then the money will follow automatically. But it's very important that you guys give it time. Of course, Rome wasn't built in a day either. So then you have your platform, you have your target. So then you need to start out. I have a basic attack strategy for you guys. I've shared this before, but I've written it down a little bit more. You can also find a medium article in the description below. First of all, start out with registering an account if possible or editing your account. You need to make sure that you include the following. Wherever possible, insert both cross-site scripting attack factors and SSTI attack factors. So what that will do is whenever you test some functionality, you'll be testing it with those attack factors wherever they are needed because of course, if you are say for example testing an invoice then you're going to need a name and the name is going to come from your account settings and it's going to include those attack factors i have an example for you as well image source equals x on error equals alert and then dollar sign squirrely bracket squirrely bracket seven times seven closing squirrely bracket if you want to look at this in writing you can in the description below um, insert that attack factor into every other possible field so wherever possible try to insert that attack factor but this is just an example i really want you to look at what cross-site scripting and ssti are and i want you to create your own attack factor because again if everybody is going to be using my attack factor and the same attack factor we're all going to find the same vulnerabilities after registering, explore the website like any normal user would. Spend quite a lot of time doing this because you already have some setup because you inserted some attack factors into your name, etc. Um, after registering, explore it, make a mind map of the functionality. That's very important because I don't know how your guys' memory is, but mine is terrible. If I don't have a mind map, I'll forget all of the functionality. And while you're exploring, keep Burp Suite or any other man in the middle proxy open in the background. What do I mean by using the application normally? Um, you might be wondering when you can finally start to hack something properly. Well, I would advise you to hold off just a little bit longer. I talked about impact in a previous section and it's very important that you know that you're supposed to be able to do with your target. So if you are testing some functionality, it's very important to know if you are able to do that functionality. Uh, broken access control is a vulnerability type. Uh, if you are able to do some things that you're not supposed to be able to do, like update a product, for example, while you're not supposed to be able to update that product, that's going to be a vulnerability. So always try to do things that you're not supposed to be able to do. You might be wondering how much time do you need to spend on your manual testing. I would advise for at least eight hours. Now that might seem long, but for me it ensures that you will get bored with your target. 
bored people or creative people in my opinion and they will try new things to fight off that boredom and that's where you will find those very deep vulnerabilities and all of those hidden endpoints. It will also help with populating your man in the middle proxy. So you've been having your man in the middle proxy open, say for example, Burp. Burp has a sitemap and all of the requests that you're doing will be available in the sitemap and will be useful for later, of course, because you can look at all of the parameterized requests. You can do some filters on them and you can look at what's being sent and re received, of course, that's going to be very effective as well usually what i do is i go through my application and then when i'm done with all of the functional testing i'll go through my applic my uh, requests in my man in the middle proxy and i'll look at what's being sent and try to manipulate all of those parameters um, if there is a manual take the time to read it fully and even follow it along a lot of things can come from that um, a stupid example I can give you guys is say for example in your manual it is written that admins can delete invoices but regular users cannot delete invoices you should always try to delete an invoice as a regular user now there's also a saying in bug bounties POC or GTFO when you are doing your initial recon and especially if you use Burp Suite Pro you might find a lot of alarms going off Say for example you use Burp Suite Pro, it might return some issues that it's found. Don't get too excited though, those vulnerabilities are often false positives. I know Burp Suite Pro is a $400 investment, but that's not a whole lot compared to what some people are willing to pay for their bug bounties. So quite a lot of hunters will have Burp Suite Pro. And honestly, if I was a company, I would run Burp Suite Pro before I would do anything to production. So. For me, it's really important that you confirm any of these findings from any of the tools that you use. It's really important. Um, guys, don't just get a report from your tool, paste it in your report and say go. No, actually confirm what you have there. It's really important because it might save you quite a lot of heartache. Some general tips, get you know your application, spend some time on using it normally and keep burp open. Start with cross-site scripting and SSTI as early as possible, if they are in scope of course. Insert them into every field that you see. It's really important that you create your own word lists. Expand the word lists with your, oh, I mean fuzzing lists of course, not word lists. So every single parameter can be fuzzed. Use your own fuzzing lists. When you find a new type of vulnerability, add it to your fuzzing list. VDP overpaid if you want less competition, POC or GTFO, and prove your impact. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you enjoyed, I would highly appreciate it if you guys could leave me a comment saying how you start in bug bounty hunting. What's your story? I would really like to know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you later. Peace.